hey everyone so welcome to this another video in this video we'll be talking about leader election what leader election is how it is relevant and how what what conditions are used to elect a leader in a distributed system right so let's go and understand why do we need leader election right so what happens is that if a distributed system is running we have multiple processes or multiple servers that are running right so sometimes we need to give a single process in the system some special powers like being the only one that can access a shared resource or assign work to others so these special powers are granted to a single individual process or server which is termed as a leader and the other server or processes are termed as followers which follow the leader and based on the commands or instruction given by the leader they work right so to grant a process these powers the system needs to elect a leader among a set of candidate processes which remain in charge until it crashes or become otherwise unavailable when that happens the remaining process detect that the leader is no longer available and elect a new one so what happens is if we show in a pictorial way is that if three processes are running so in which uh, all of them wants to become a leader but only one gets to become the leader and then it gives instruction to the other two on how to process and uh, work together and this special rights are given to only process let's say two in our case if it is the leader so uh, if there comes a time when process two stops then other two processes one of the other two processes tries to become a leader and it will start an election and then based on the voting one of the other two processes become the leader right and it handles that job of the leader to pass on instruction and guide how the other processes should should work together right now in the case of three processes it uh, seems as a simple process but when the number of process increases this uh, leader election and the job of leader to pass on the instruction to all of its follower let's say if there are 100 followers so in that case passing its instruction to all the remaining 99 followers or 100 followers it will become a bit hard so that is what we'll understand on how the leader election works right so one of the algorithm that we use for leader election is raft leader election right so this algorithm states that there can be three states in which a process or a server can stay follower state candidate state and leader state the follower state is the state which is when uh, it is blindly following the leader for the instruction and the instruction that is passed by the leader the follower state applies to its own state and then it works in sync with the leader right candidate state is when this particular process or server wants to become the leader it stays in the candidate state and lets the uh, lets the other follower vote whether this candidate uh, process or server should become the leader or not right so the leader election works in such a way that in which um uh, the election uh, so so uh, when the process starts up it is initially a follower right this follower is contacting with the leader all the time and taking the instructions from the leader and say, staying uh, in sync with the leader in terms of state right now let's say the leader times out so this follower will start the election and it will jump and move to the candidate state right now the can in in the candidate state if the election times out this this particular process still stays in the candidate states but it starts a new election right so that's why we have a arrow pointing to itself that means that if the election gets time out it will start another election right and if in case this candidate process wins the election with the majority number of votes from the server then it becomes the leader right now what happens if this leader disco discovers servers with the highest term right so if there is some other process or server which is which has a more updated state available and these um, follower processes elect that particular server as the leader then in that case this leader will go back to being a follower and then will start uh, matching its state with that leader available right now there is one more uh, option here in which when the lead, when the follower started the election and became the candidate it loses the election so some other process will become the leader and this candidate will go back and become the follower so these are the possible cases that can happen in a raft leader election so either a follower can first become a candidate and then become a leader or then the 
follower can become a candidate and can then go back after losing the election to becoming the follower again right so these are this is a fairly simple um, term and like this is the fairly simple process in which the raft leader election works now there is a problem with this leader election is that suppose there are multiple processes that need, needs to update a shared blob store right now what will happen is that if a single po- uh, if you want to guarantee that only a single process at a time can do that to avoid the race condition and all you dis- decide to uh, use a distributed mutex now mutex is a type of locking mechanism in which the database will be logged until this process has returned to it now what the problem here is that by the time the process writes the content to the store it might no longer be the leader and a lot might have happened since it was elected for example the operating system might have preemptively stopped the process and several sec- second l- later uh, it was running again right it, it it starts running again so how this process can be sure that it is still the leader after those many seconds right so one of the things that it can do is it could check one more time that whether uh, it is the leader or not but that that would not eliminate the race condition it will just make it less likely right the way the race condition is eliminated so uh, again let's let's see here the the way it uh, the way what the problem that i'm trying to uh, make you understand is that the leader starts writing to the database and then in between the leader process stops right and then this leader starts uh, and comes back to life again and then it starts writing again but now this database and this leader is not sure whether this leader um, is still the leader or there is some other process while in the absence of this particular process became the leader so in that case uh, we have an uncertainty whether this leader should be given the permission to write on the database or not right so the way we can solve this is by using a fencing token now what is a fencing token the fencing token is basically a counter that is given with every time a lock is acquired so every time the mutex lock lock is acquired a fencing token is given and the blob store what it does is it checks whether the fencing token that came with the right operation if that is greater than the last acquired lock that did the operation on the blob if this particular fencing token is greater than that that means this operation is a latest operation than the last operation which was done on the blob so in that case this blob will allow the operation to be executed if this is not the uh, if, if this is not the greater than what blob contains then it won't allow this particular process to work right so that's that is how we solve this condition um, of leader not being the leader and there are multiple issues as well like there can be an issue in which um let's say the leader fails or the follower fails like we'll cover all the, all of this situation in the next video but that's all for the, this this video